In this Badge That session, you can look forward to learning about our new AWS Learning Badge offerings. My name is Christy Lee, and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS. Hi, I'm Fatima Kamal. I'm a Storage Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. Welcome to Pi Day. Very excited to be here with Christy to talk more about the object and block digital badges that we have here. All right, excellent. Let's jump into it. So today, we're going to cover an overview of our new AWS Learning Badges and its benefits for expanding your knowledge on AWS storage solutions. We'll talk about where you can register and how you can prepare for your badge journey. Lastly, we'll wrap up with what you can do once you've earned your badge. First, let's touch on who these badges are for. Are you new to cloud technologies and building architectures and looking to build credibility with potential employers? Maybe you're an information technology or storage specialist who is looking to add cloud skills into your toolkit. Or perhaps you're a seasoned cloud builder and you're looking to demonstrate your, your skill set from years of building with AWS. So whether you're an AWS customer or a partner, our new learning badges are designed to grow your confidence and complement your skill set so that you can build well-architected designs in the cloud. Now, our customers have asked us for learning badges for years now. We listened, and we are very excited to present that as of this year, we've launched two new badge offerings. These badges complement our industry-recognized AWS certification program to highlight your AWS skills and proficiency. Similar to how you may have achieved technical certifications in the past, these badges are designed to demonstrate your knowledge of cloud topics. Block storage and object storage badges are the first storage specialty focus areas we have launched. And earning a badge is a worthy achievement to recognize and verify your skills. Best of all, it's free and available to everyone to get started on a badge journey. There are four steps to help you prepare for your first badge. First of all, you'll want to register for a free AWS Skill Builder account. Anyone can sign up, and you'll get instant access to our curated learning plans with content developed by AWS. Within Skill Builder, you'll find various learning plans. Now, the two learning plans that offer badges are block storage and object storage, but you will find other learning plans in there for other cloud domains too. Now, this is important. There is no prior cloud experience necessary to enroll. Each course is designed to be self-paced, on demand, for folks of all experience levels. And the courses are segmented by topic so that you can tailor your learning experience to your current experience level. And once you're ready, you can take on the badge assessment and test your knowledge. Badges will be awarded if you achieve a passing score of 80% or better. Once you've earned a badge, it'll be digitally distributed via Credly so that you can demonstrate your achievement. Let's dive a little deeper into each of these steps. Sure. So, at AWS Skill Builder, you'll find digital content developed by our AWS service teams and field subject matter experts. As of today, there are over 500 courses across a variety of cloud domains to help you meet your learning goals. These domain areas include security, networking, compute, and of course, storage. To register, log in via an Amazon account or create a new account. Remember, it is free for everyone to be able to sign up and access this training. You'll be able to browse through our digital, uh, digital learning catalog. And if you're lo looking to learn a specific domain, you can enroll into one of our learning plans. Each learning plan consists of a collection of training courses for a specific domain around cost, performance, design, security, and so forth. Best of all, we do offer our courses in 17 different languages. Christy, did you just say 17 languages? I did. What are some of those languages that these courses are developed in? So we recognize, just like our AWS cloud and regions, that our customers are global. And it's important for us to ensure that the digital training is, is accessible to a diverse audience. So for this reason, we offer our course content in multiple languages, including English, Spanish, French, Chinese, Japanese, and many more. Wow, that's super cool. So let's show you a quick demo of how easy it is to enroll into a learning plan so that you can start on your badge journey. So you'll log in via skillbuilder.aws, 
And once you're first in the portal, you'll see our collection of learning plans and digital training. You'll be able to browse our courses and filter by what is your preferred language, what is the cloud domain that you want to learn from, whether that be storage or other, uh, what course level you want to start at, and of course, the type of training that you want to enroll into. In order to find the learning plans that have badges, what you'll want to do is search for the storage learning plans. This will bring up a collection of storage-related learning courses, but the two that offer badges today are the block storage and the object storage ones. So let's show an example of what it looks like to enroll into the object storage badge, sorry, object storage learning plan, and how you can get your badge. So you will notice that there is actually a collection of subtopics within each learning plan, and some of these subtopics will actually be common between the learning plans. So for example, the getting started with AWS storage will be common across most of the storage learning plans. So you will get credit for it and recognized for it if you do any one of these across your courses. Once you have previewed the content, you can start a course straight away and you'll be granted instant access into the course. Within Skills Builder, we will track your progress so that you can come back, pick up where you left off, learn at the pace that suits you and your schedule, and keep track of your learning goals that way. To give you a preview of what the content looks like, it is presented in a digital training format that is easy to consume that you can pick up and resume at any given time. And to help you with reinforcing what you're learning with each of these modules, you'll be presented either a short quiz or an assessment at the very end to help you build that confidence as you step through each of these learning courses. Pretty cool, isn't it? Absolutely. This yeah. is really good. This really helped me with learning my, my um, with, with learning object storage as well as for, for block storage too. So that is perfect. Now, of course, now you're wondering, where do I find that badge assessment that you're talking about? Where do I get my AWS learning badge? So within each of these learning plans, if you scroll to the bottom, mm -hmm. you will find the object storage or block storage badge assessment appropriately. To start the assessment, just click Start Learning Now and you'll be able to begin the quiz straight away. In order to earn a badge, you will need to obtain a pass mark of 80% or better, uh, and you'll find out straight away once you've, once you've taken the assessment what your result is. Now, independent of what your assessment result might be, at the end of the assessment, you will find out um, a recommended prescriptive list of courses to go back and review if you're looking to make sure that you're well-versed in that particular topic. So I do recommend giving it a try. Uh, I, the other thing I wanted to add is you don't have to do all the coursework prior to the session in order to actually try the assessment. So if you have existing cloud experience, feel free to dive in, give the assessment a go, and see where your learning gaps may be. So, That's a cool demo, Christy. <laughs> So as a preview of what you can expect, Fatima, could you tell us a little bit more about the block storage badge? Sure. So as you walked us through how to enroll into the Skill Builder program, um, there is a storage learning plan for both block storage and object storage. So in the block storage plan, there is, again, a comprehensive plan put together by our block storage SMEs, um, and that will help you prepare for the assessment. So you can grow your skills on EBS with the learning plan or validate your skills if you're already working on EBS deployments. That's pretty awesome. So I, I'd like to learn a little bit more about how you prepared for the block storage. Sure. So if you're absolutely new to block storage, this learning plan is going to be super helpful for you. Um, there are lots of dive deep sessions on architecting on EBS, managing and monitoring EBS, and even cost and performance optimization using various EBS volumes. Uh, but if you're, let's say, if you're already working on EBS, uh, then this will just help you validate those skills. That's awesome. Now, Fatima, I'm dying to know. <laughs> How have you used these skills in your current role today? Sure, uh, so I do work with EBS customers a lot and I support a lot of EBS deployments. So for me, it's helped me validate my existing knowledge, but it has also helped me identify some key area gaps um, and that you can find it out from your details in the assessment. Uh, so that has helped me to go back and learn some of the uh, topics that's provided there. But let's say you're working on EBS deployments, then this is like super helpful for you to show your employers or your customers that they are working with an expert. And having that object badge or a digital badge validates it. For instance, um, I learned about the archive tier on, for EBS snapshots, and that's helping me drive these cost savings co co conversations with my customers. 
So it's really helpful for me. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Wait, didn't the archive tier only get released uh, a couple months ago during yeah. reInvent? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's it's pretty cool one. to find out. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Fatima. Sure. You know, similarly, for the object storage digital badge, you will learn and be assessed on various Amazon Simple Storage Service or S3 aspects. This includes learning about use cases for your various storage classes, how do you secure your S3 buckets for data and transit, data at rest, as well as how do you optimize for cost as your buckets might grow and ways to protect your buckets, especially around business continuity and disaster recovery use cases. So what did you learn that you did not know before? Oh, I learned through going through the object storage plan, uh, sorry, the object storage learning plan, that there is a new S3 storage class called Glacier Instant Retrieval. I could you know, help my customers design uh, their buckets in a way where they could optimize for cost but still get instant access to these rarely accessed objects. Hmm. Even better, I could help them with automating the tiering into these other storage classes so that they could manage their spend over time, something that my customers have been very excited about. Uh, all, all the while maintaining and making sure that we still can meet their performance requirements for their use cases. Wow. OK, Christy, tell me this. What are you now looking forward to now that you have your book badges, your digital, your block, and of your object badges? So in talking to customers, one of the most common use cases that we see come up all the time is how do I build a data lake? How do I scale my data lake? How do, how do I make sure it performs? And how do I make sure it's cost efficient? Mm -hmm. So I, I realized by browsing through Skills Builder and its various learning plans, there's actually one for data analytics. So right. I'm really excited to dive a little bit deeper into that so I can help my customers with building their data lakes. That's cool. Pretty exciting stuff. All right. So. From the demo earlier, the object and block learning plans have a badge assessment included as the final course topic. In order to earn the badge, take the assessment and obtain a pass mark of at least 80% or better to demonstrate your knowledge in that storage specialty area. Once you've passed, your badge will be issued, managed and distributed by Credly. Credly is an independent platform that hosts a digital credential network which verifies credentials for a variety of vendors, including AWS. And best of all, it is available for anyone to sign up for a free Credly account. Through your Credly account, you can share your verified badges to your community of NPOs via social media sites such as LinkedIn and Twitter. You can also highlight your badge on your resume to demonstrate your proficiency in AWS storage solutions to potential employers. Perhaps you're part of a team that's about to embark on a cloud migration or cloud modernization project. These badges are a great way to demonstrate your confidence in AWS cloud domains. Now, while the first AWS loading badges are object and block storage, as a sneak preview of what you can look forward to, later this year, we're planning to launch additional badges to recognize folks with storage specialty areas such as in file storage, data protection and disaster recovery, as well as data migration. So, if there are any learning badges you'd like to see AWS add, let us know in the Twitch comments. We at AWS are customer obsessed, and we love hearing what you would find valuable to help you with your career and cloud learning goals. So as a call to action, I invite you to check out AWS Skill Builder and enroll in these courses to get started today. They are so free, so do take advantage of it and get your object and block badges. Thank you for joining our session, and I hope you enjoy your Pi Day. Uh, do scan the QR code to get the access to all of the Pi Day presentation decks. We'll go on for Q&A. So I've got a couple of Pi jokes, Bathma, if you don't mind. Go ahead, humor me. All right. What do you call a square pie? Um, don't know. Delicious. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> OK, I got one for you, Christy. OK. What is your favorite programming language? Oh. I think for today, it's got to be Python. Ah, OK. <laughs> but any other day, we'll have to see. <laughs> Good one. All right. <laughs> right, thanks, Christy. Those jokes were very special. <laughs> I, I think I'm groaning on the inside of the last one. I'm sorry. We're not, we're not allowed to groan on the outside here. So. <laughs> awesome. So I have some questions for you. There's a lot of information in that. And as I mentioned earlier on, that was one of my favorite blog posts to write for the news blog last year, because I think it's 
the fact that the courses are free and you can get the badges, etc., it's a great leveler for people who want to get started learning in the cloud. So that's awesome. But do you have to complete the full learning course to attempt to get the badge, the block or storage badges? Not necessarily. Uh, so if you're already working on EBS, what you can do is just look into the areas that need a bit of improvement on your side. So you can just narrow down to those particular topics, go through the learning plan for just those topics, and that should help you prepare well for the assessment. So, um, you know, if, if you're new to EBS, well, you will have to probably go through the whole uh, learning plan, but otherwise just select the topics that you really want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. mm. So within Skill Builder, it's designed so that anyone from any experience level with any cloud experience can learn and prepare for a badge assessment appropriately. So like Fatha mentioned, you can pick and choose, but you don't have to. You can go straight to the badge assessment if you want, just to find out you know, how will you fare up, and then it'll give you guidance as to what you can study afterwards in order to get a higher, higher mark on your next assessment attempt. This actually ties into something I hear from our customers a lot. There's, you know, we. We have customers in every industry in AWS, and and often there's you know there's a great concern at our customers for getting getting their employees skilled up in the cloud. You know this is you know relatively speaking is a relatively new skill set. And a question I often get uh, from people who are in technology but they're brand new to all of this cloud stuff is you know if someone's a total beginner and they see that we have these nice kind of like low barrier to entry mm -hmm. badges and courses. You're totally new to the cloud. You know, Christy, Fatima, Steve, what, where, where would you start? What badges might be good to go after first? What, cla what courses uh, might be good to try first if you're just trying to get a foothold in, in cloud skills? Sure, so within uh, AWS Skill Builder, it's a great way to access our free training content and you can go across our various cloud domains, not just storage. So these are a great place to start. So you can t take on topics that you think would find most interesting to you, and you can pick which level you want to start at too. So you can filter your training plans by the course level where you're at currently today, and get a great way, and it's a great way for you to build your, sk your skills up that way too. So I definitely do recommend logging in, checking out the learning plans. It's free to do so, and anyone can have access to it. So I'm an ex-developer, and I'm somewhat impatient recovering. when it comes to <laughs> recovering yes. ex-developer. Yeah, and I'm somewhat impatient when it comes to proving my skill set, or at least it used to be anyway. <laughs> <But> <laughs> how quickly could I actually get a badge? I'm glad you asked. Um, so anyone can try out the badge assessment. You don't have to do the course topics prior to it just to give it a go. So you can jump straight into it, Steve, if you would like, and you'll find out right after the assessment, what your score is. But, however, it will take a couple of days, assuming you pass your badge assessment, to be issued a badge. You'll have to wait about five to seven days before you're, you're granted the pass, but at least you'll know immediately whether you've earned it or not. All right, and let's say that um, I'm a little overconfident, and I pile <laughs> straight into the assessment, and you know I don't, I don't get the passing rate. I think you said it was 80%. No. Um, <laughs> And how many times can I attempt the assessment? So um, you can attempt as many times as you would like, but you might be able to attempt just once in 24 hours. Uh, so if, if you're not able to do that, wait 24 hours and re-attempt it, and it should take care of it. But look into those assessment details to see where you want to just read up before you take the assessment next time. That's a good idea, yeah. And do badges expire? Once you've earned a badge, the badge will not expire. Mm -hmm. However, like we mentioned in the session, there will be new badges that we'll be offering out, and over time, we'll likely also refresh those badges, so there may be new versions that come out with it. So definitely something to look out for as you're going through a badge journey. Cool. One final question from me. Um, hopefully, Becky's got another question. Pretty sure she has. Um, so do I need to be an AWS customer or have an account to access Skill Builder and the learning badges? Um, not at all. So you can have your own Amazon personal account and you can enroll using your personal account to get access to that learning plan, which is absolutely free. So anybody can yeah, use their Amazon account, enroll into the learning plan, um, you know, go through the learning plan and the assessment and get the badge. It's open to everyone. Mm -hmm. You can sign up as long as you've got access. To, uh, you, can, you can get through through your favorite browser. Uh, you don't have to be an AWS customer or partner, right. but it's certainly open to our AWS customers and partners too. 
Yeah, one thing I love about one thing I love about this is it actually gives someone concrete steps to take mm -hmm. uh, when yes. you know, when you're learning a new technology, which is something that um, you know in my career I've done many times. You know, not just cloud, but other technologies. It can be challenging to figure out well, what are my first steps to take? You know, I see that there's there's always a lot of information out there, but it's hard to be guided to exactly what parts are relevant and what parts are appropriate for someone beginning to learn uh, to learn the technology. I really love how here we, uh, we're doing kind of a, a structured, guided entry point into, into learning cloud skills. I think it'd be very valuable for people who learn technology and know that it's not always that straightforward to figure out where to start. Um, Christy, Fatima, what can you tell our audience about uh, the badges available? You know, because it's often true, S3 is one of these very foundational services mm -hmm. in AWS. Often when our customers use S3, they're also doing other things in the cloud. You know, they've got, they want to have workloads running on EC2 or one of our other compute options. They want databases, they're going to do some stuff with networking. What are some of the other areas that um, that you're seeing being very popular with these badges? You know, place the other 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 badge topics in AWS that you're seeing a lot of people uh, take advantage of. So in terms of the courses that offer badges today, it is the object and block ones to get started. Mm -hmm. But in terms of complementary courses that you'll likely want to explore because it'll often tie into where you're using your storage, I would say definitely check out our, computes, our compute courses, our analytics courses, our networking courses as well. These are the fundamentals for any building block. Yeah, and of course, I asked that question, but I have a little bit of an opinion about this myself. <laughs> I, when people ask me, <laughs> When people ask me uh, what, where should I start for learning the cloud, and I'm really talking about the perspective of a developer type person, someone a built what we call at Amazon a builder, someone who's going to be building things on the cloud. Maybe it's my own bias talking, but actually the best place I think to start on a cloud journey is actually learning some of the fundamentals of, um, if you can believe it, identity and access management, permissions, because okay. this this is a theme that this is the theme that cross cuts everything in AWS, and if you're looking to learn about it from a foundational level, knowing how that works, uh, you know, knowing how to be effective there, well, you've instantly learned something that is going to help you with a whole lot of AWS services across a whole lot of different categories. And so, and I think that would complement very much this sort of badge, um, these sort of storage-based badges, because you know, what, well, what's the first thing you want to do with your storage is you want to know that it's secure. Secure. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's my own personal recommendation if you're trying to learn cloud, where 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 I would start, and you know, also these badges very useful sort of guided uh, learning in the cloud. That's excellent. Thank you. Becky. Yeah. <laughs> are there right. are there badges awarded for eating pie? pie? <laughs> Not yet, but Not I think yet. should be. The power of yet. I'm going to earn a few shortly. So Yeah, I think yeah. then we start getting into the realm of competitive eating and it's probably best that we stay yes. away from that. Yes. Um, yes. But we do have one final question for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, what is your favorite pie? So for me, um, it's a blueberry pie that my twins make. Uh, it's to die for, they build it from scratch. Uh, they put a lattice bridge on it and oh. my all time mm -hmm. favorite. Those, those lattice, that those lattice, lattice tops at the pie, those are very hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds wonderful. That sounds delicious. Yeah, well. it is. Um, Christy, I grew, how about you? I grew up in Australia, so my favorite pie is the Australian <laughs> meat pie. So I highly recommend finding one if you do get the opportunity. They are delicious. You know, Christy, actually, as we were talking about at a, a previous session today was about uh, global reach and in particular this multi-region access point uh, feature and one of the things I noted is that the pie construct is you know kind of extends around the world if you uh, think about it loosely enough and so there you go you just heard about you just heard about Australian pie so pie for our Sydney region <laughs> <laughs> awesome well thank you so much both of you thank, thank you, you. Hey, Becky. thank you All right, I think we're ready for the next section. All We're right, almost. well, it's your intro. Yes, <laughs> so I'm gonna, so S3, you know, like we talked about before today, S3 actually at its core is a very, very simple thing. Uh, 
you store your data in S3, and then later you can retrieve your data in S3. But of course, we've been spending 16 years in the lifetime of S3, uh, surrounding it with all of the features that support the things that our customers want to do with their data. And one of the things that you often want to do with data, if you've ever managed a database or anything like that, is, well, you want to have a backup. Right, one of the first questions you, you get asked if you're managing any amount of data is, where's the backup? How are we backing up? What is our, dis what is our disaster recovery plan? Mm -hmm. So this is one of those things that we at AWS have surrounded our st various storage offerings uh, with, and I'm not just talking about S3. You're gonna hear about AWS Backup, which is a service that offers backup not just for S3, but for a bunch of other AWS services that hold your data as well. Now, this is very much a response to some of the some of the some of the questions our customers ask us about how we can help them. Um, for example, earlier today, we talked about S3 replication features. So, replication, of course, you can take a bucket of data in S3 and get it replicated, get it copied or mirrored into another account. Could even be in another region. And that's a, you know, that's a very straightforward and good disaster recovery setup. It's a feature that we've had in S3 for quite some time now. But then at AWS, we love to think at scale. So turning on replication for that one bucket, very straightforward, totally works. And then another bucket, and then another bucket, and then more accounts, and maybe thousands of accounts with you know, with buckets in each and, you know, other da AWS data sources in each. And it starts to get, even with replication, even with such a powerful feature, it starts to get a little bit challenging. How do I know that I actually set up replication across this whole environment? So today we have Anar and Priyesh, and they're going to tell us a little bit about how to do backup at scale at the level of your cloud estate. Um, now, Pies, do Pies have backups? Well, so actually they do. Backup Pie is actually a thing, Steve. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in my in my family, particularly when we were uh, commemorating a special event of some kind and, you know, there'd be a special meal and a dessert, we would always have backup desserts. You definitely don't want to mm -hmm. run out of desserts. So, no. Backup Pie is a thing. Backup Pie is for your pie disaster recovery mm -hmm. when you run out of mm -hmm. dessert. Which is a disaster. That's a total disaster. Total disaster. <laughs> All right, Honor and Priyash, over to you. Let's hear about uh, let's hear about uh, centralizing and automating data protection of your applications with AWS Backup. 